Well, I was approached with the book Republic of Trees by Sam Taylor, which I read and found fascinating, not so much for story or narrative, but for tone. There was this rather beautiful and well-realised sort of tone of very adolescent longing that I don't think people capture very well. Um, and so I, and I had a real sense that I knew how to deal with that visually, which I, and I sort of decided to take it on, but it was a very it's a long and slow process because because the book wouldn't have worked in, sort of in my opinion, narratively as film. I had to, st I sort of started from a sort of sensation and tone and, and had to build a narrative from that. So there's very, there's sort of, it really is just sort of inspired by the book. Um, and some of the themes are the same. I mean, they're children who are out of place, they're kind of lost children, all of them in a place where they don't speak the language. And there's also, there were lots of unrealized elements in the book which I think you need in a, in a, in a kind of realistic medium. Where, where are the parents, what's happening? So you understand some kind of framework for what, what's really happening to this boy. There's a sort of point around this sort of age of 11 or 12, when you're on the cusp of adulthood and childhood, where reality and fantasy can blur, and you can be very, very, very vulnerable. And I did a lot of research on schizophrenia in sort of early teens and things, and how it, that is an age when these things can happen. And I, I thought there was something very interesting about a very vulnerable boy sort of being displaced and then offered something magical and what he would do to try and hold on to that and the kind of fantasies, the childish fantasies he, he would construct to an adult end. But the real challenge of this is maintaining empathy for Dara all the way through because what he does is rather terrible and it's really no one's fault in a way. None of the adults are actually bad, he just falls through the gaps. And um, that's the challenge, and I think that's my ongoing challenge. We did endless, endless auditions in Ireland. We saw thousands of children, nearly all non-actors, actually. But, um, and it very much felt that this was a film I had to cast from the children upwards. It was I had to cast Dara the Knowing and just work out from that. So build fat, sort of properly believable families that worked. And I'd seen a photo of Jack as he'd been in a, in a play that done very well in Dublin, and I then couldn't meet him for a few weeks, so in that time I did see so many boys, and he's quite an extraordinary character. He's, he's a talented actor, even at, so I met him when he was 16, he's now 17. And this was really something that was just exactly at the right time for him, I think. And he just, he sort of, well, I didn't audition anyone who came close to him. And I didn't think I would work with an actor. I've always worked with non-acting um, children and often non-acting adults. Imogen was very interesting. I cast her from the, the school around the corner from my house. We had an open audition. And she is quite an unusual and strong-willed and striking girl. And then she just had some quality we, that we kept coming back to. And I, did, I saw her numerous times before I actually cast her and we screen tested her and I really, because she'd never done any acting, I felt that I had to do lots and lots of rehearsals and auditions just so that she really, I knew she was going to be capable of what I was going to ask her to do, but actually she's proved quite amazing and better than I could have hoped, so that's good. And Austin was in a play in London, again I didn't think I'd cast an acting kid but he just blew everybody away in the auditions. One of the decisions I made at the beginning, which I then changed my mind about, was not giving them the script. But through rehearsal, it became very clear that actually I should give Jack the script. Um, I did sort of meet with their parents and talk about the subject matter, because I didn't, obviously I needed their support and okay, and that, you know, checking that their children were gonna be all right with this. But uh, what, what happened is that they were quite demanding of wanting to know. So I ended up, I gave Jack everything and worked with him. And then I sort of drip fed the other three children sections of the script. But what I found interesting was we worked through things and then we would talk about them. But it was surprising to me how clear a, a view they had on things. And Imogen's, for instance, has, has said to me, oh, but it's completely understandable why he does what he does. Of course, that's what he would do. Uh, so they obviously feel that his acts are justified, which is, is good because I think that probably 
so it doesn't feel gratuitous what happens. Because there's a kind of quite prosaic world that Jack lives in, Dara lives in, prosaic world that Dara lives in. And then there, there is his slightly fantastical world. And then there's a kind of darker world as he gets more and more lost. And I've had to sort of discover those textures almost as I've, as I've gone along. I hope an audience would be really absorbed in the story and understand exactly why Jack does what he does without making a judgment. So I think if it's a reflection on culpability and how we kind of demonise children who do terrible acts, I think that would be that would be a, would be a, you know an achievement in itself actually.